So I've been talking about rheumatoid arthritis for a bazillion years. Today I'll talk about the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, this inflammatory chronic arthritis, which has the rheumatoid factor, which is an IgM against the FC portion of IgG. ESR is high, CRP is high, ferritin is high, platelets are high. With that being said, now let's get started. Rheumatoid factor is an antibody against an antibody, IgM against the FC portion of IgG, leading to immune complex deposition, arthritis, vasculitis, etc. This is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Rheumatoid factor is more sensitive than specific. 80% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis, high levels in the plasma, is correlated with worse prognosis, and more likely to have joint erosions and deformity. Anti-CCP predicts the progression if it's anti-CCP positive, you are more likely to get erosions and joint deformity and to have a worse prognosis. Anti-CCP is positive in 6-70%, therefore not sensitive. However, it's very specific. So, diagnosis. First, you need symptoms for more than 6 weeks. If you have a patient who came to you yesterday, Hey honey, when did the joint pain and stiffness start? It started two days ago. It's not rheumatoid. Get your head out of your sphincter, doctor. Now, clinically, history and physical, and there are criteria of diagnosis by the American College of Rheumatology and the European Union League Against Rheumatism. Who are these people? Next, we have the lab, joint fluid analysis, radiology, and tissue biopsy. So, clinician, lab technician, radiologist, pathologist. To diagnose seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, you'll have to have all of the following. Inflammatory arthritis, 1 to 10 joints. Duration of more than 6 weeks, again because it's chronic. Rheumatoid factor and or anti-CCP and that's why we call it seropositive. The serum is positive for RF and or anti-CCP. Also you will need increased ESR or CRP or both. To get the current criteria for rheumatoid arthritis, go to rheumatology.org. Lab, we have inflammatory markers, CBC, O2 antibodies, and serum. Inflammatory marker, ESR and CRP are high usually. First, you have to understand what trending is. Patients are different. For some patients, ESR and CRP are indicative of an acute flare of rheumatoid arthritis. For the other group of patients with rheumatoid arthritis, ESR and CRP have nothing to correlate with the flare whatsoever, not correlated. So, how to know if this patient is from group A, which correlates, or group B, which doesn't correlate? You trend the ESR and CRP. You keep repeating the test. Hey, do you have inflammation today? No, let's do ESR and CRP. Next time, do you have flare today? Yes, let's do ESR and CRP. And then you can tell if this patient has ESR and CRP that correlate with the disease activity or not. It's called trending. Do I trend them on Twitter? No, bro, you trend them over time. Next, ferritin is high. Why? Because it's an acute phase reactant, APR, not to be confused with your annual percentage rate on your stupid credit card. Increased total serum protein, IgG, gamma globulin, are increased. And you can find polyclonal gammopathy on serum protein electrophoresis, which is different from multiple myeloma, because multiple myeloma had monoclonal gammopathy, not polyclonal, because multiple myeloma is cancer, baby. Rheumatoid arthritis is not. Let's go to the CBC. Decrease hemoglobin, decrease hematocrit. That's the definition of anemia. So you'll have anemia. What kind of anemia? Lots of them. Usually anemia of chronic disease or iron deficiency anemia. Both of them start as normocytic, normochromic, then they will turn into microcytic, hypochromic. Because Rome didn't fall in one day, if you remember my hematology videos. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia will have normal MCV. Megaloblastic anemia, why? Because they are taking methotrexate and lots of stuff that inhibit the folate or the DHF, dihydrofolate reductase. This will have increased MCV called megaloblastic anemia. But if the question asks you what's the most common morphology of anemia, it's going to be normocytic, normochromic in cases of rheumatoid arthritis. That's the most common presentation. White blood cells, leukocytosis, why? Because rheumatoid is an inflammatory arthritis. Monocytosis, lymphocytosis, anything that's chronic, don't say neutrophils, because rheumatoid is a chronic disease. 
Platelets, secondary thrombocytosis. Why? Platelets can be considered as an acute phase reactant. Also, any chronic inflammation will secrete interleukin-6. Interleukin-6 is going to stimulate TPO, thrombopoietin, and it will increase platelet production. Next, O2 antibodies. Positive rheumatoid factor, positive anti-CCB, positive ANA. But ANA is kind of trash. Let's go to the serum. Hypocomplementemia, especially the C3, and increased D-dimer. So just because your D-dimer is high doesn't necessarily mean you have DVT. Please watch my video on D-dimer where I discuss the pretest probability. Joint fluid analysis. In rheumatoid, you have decreased viscosity. Okay, let's compare between the normal and rheumatoid. Volume, less than 3.5, more than 3. Why? Because there is, that's the definition of the freaking effusion. Clarity, transparent, not transparent, translucent, which is kind of darker, to opaque, which is darker. Color, normally clear or straw colored. In rheumatoid, it's yellow to opalescent, multiple colors. White blood cells, less than 200. Rheumatoid, 2,000 to 75,000. PMNs, less than 25 of the total white blood cells in the joint, more than 50% during the acute flare. Got it. Culture, negative, negative. There is no bacteria. This is not septic arthritis. Get your head out of your sphincter. If you didn't understand this, it means you haven't watched my videos on the joint fluid analysis. I have three videos on these. Radiology, baby. X-ray. The patient is upright and standing on the knee. This is the knee, for example. We have symmetrical joint space narrowing, loss of cartilage, marginal bone erosion, periarticular osteopenia, soft tissue swelling. If you haven't watched my pathophysiology video on rheumatoid, you will not gonna understand anything of this. Okay, here is normal. Oh, see the joint space narrowing? Yes. Do you remember why? The penis is eating everything. What's the penis? inflamed granulation tissue full of lymphocytes fibroblast etc loss of cartilage do you see here there is no cart cartilage is invisible on x-ray so you don't see cartilage here but it's there but now there is no cartilage there are those two joints coming close together called joint space narrow marginal bone erosion on the margin periarticular osteopenia decreased bone density here soft tissue swelling you might try to deduce this on the x-ray, but you need an MRI to see the soft tissues clearly. In brief, rheumatoid arthritis has destruction of cartilage, destruction of bone. So here is the normal, here is rheumatoid. See this and see this. What do you notice? Joint space narrowing, loss of cartilage, marginal bone erosions, periarticular osteopenia, soft tissue swelling. Boom! Don't forget, you might need x-ray with flexion and extension views of the cervical spine to rule out atlantoaxial instability or subluxation. Watch my previous video. Tissue biopsy. If you couldn't diagnose rheumatoid otherwise, you might need tissue biopsy. This is very unlikely. Okay. Gross, which doesn't mean disgusting. It means big. Synovium is thickened because it's inflamed. Edematous because it's inflamed. Hyperplastic because it's inflamed. Instead of smooth, it shows bulbous villi. Microscopic. Synovial cell hyperplasia. Again, inflamed. Proliferation. Lots of white blood cells, cytokines, all of the crazy stuff. Fibroperulant exudate. It's not transudate. That's not edema of CHF, baby. It's exudate. That's inflammation. Angiogenesis will increase vascularity, dense inflammatory infiltrate, don't say neutrophils please. We have lymphocytes, plasma cells, macrophages, osteoclastic activity because they will cut down bone, break down the bone, erosions, and subchondral cysts. Don't forget the pannus, which is granulation tissue that's inflamed containing inflammatory cells and fibroblasts, cartilage destruction, and even ankylosis, which is fusion starts as fibrous then becomes bony hashtag ossification which is horrible rheumatoid arthritis is all about cartilage destruction and bone destruction however osteoarthritis was cartilage destruction and bone growth thank you so much for watching please subscribe and join the tribe hit the bell to get notified go to facebook i have more than 100 vignettes 
Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, support this channel on patreon.com forward slash metacosis and I'll send you my great PDF notes and cases and notebooks and all of the goodies. Thank you so much for watching. This is Metacosis Perfect Channels where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy and study hard.